Hi, Joel. Hi. My name's Amina. I'm one of the doctors here today. I'm going to have a look at your chest and listen to your heart. Okay? Is that okay with you, Bob? Perfect. Thank you. Do you have some nice cars there? Can I look at your cars? What colours are they? <gasps> They're all hiding. Which one's your favourite? Which one's your favourite? Ooh, the green one. Okay, I'm just going to take a look just from here, just see if... What's your favourite colour? Uh oh. Green. Green's your favourite colour. That's a lovely colour. Can I take a look at your hand, Joel? Oh, thank you. Lovely. Perfect. What's my name? It's Amina. Amina. Do you want to hold this until we're done? Yeah. Okay. And can you do this funny thing where you point up and you point down and then you stick your fingers together? <gasps> You've done this before, haven't you? Yes. Oh my goodness, you're very good at it. ST1. What does ST1 stand for? <laughs> it means I'm a doctor who's still training. That's what it means. And can I have a feel of the Don't other one as well? Still training for doctor. And you're helping me to train today, aren't you, by being here? And I'd like to know his blood pressure, please. Okay. And Joel, can I take a look at your eyes if that's okay? Wow. Are we going to play a staring competition? And can you pull your eyelid down? Great work. This is fine. Yeah, just that one. One's fine. Thank you. And can you open your mouth up? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, let's have a little look at your teeth. Uh, okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. And can you rest back now, if possible? Well done. And put your head all the way back. And have a look at mummy. Great. Just going to look at your neck for a little bit. Well done. Okay, now you can look to the front if you like. Just make sure my hands are warm for you. And I'm going to have a feel of your neck, okay? Okay. Microphone. Yeah, that's a microphone. That's right. The real life. It's a real life microphone. But it's a very small one, isn't it? Well done. Did you talk through it? Yeah, I think you can. Okay. And let me just, before I listen to your heart, let's just have a little look all around for any scars. So I can see you've got this one in the middle. And sit up. <laughs> and you've got two here as well, do you? And a little one by the side. Okay. There it is. Well done. Okay, lie back down now, Joel, and Maybe let's have I'll a little listen to you. That's a really good way of looking at things. Make sure it's nice and warm for you. Joel, could you sit up for me if possible? Were you the first to train? Sorry? Were you the first to train? The first train? <laughs> Number one, it means I'm in my first... It's my first year of being a, p a children's doctor. Oh. Right, can you, you take a really deep breath train. in and hold it? <gasps> good, well done. Relax. Okay, good work. All right, then. And whilst you're sat up, sorry, sorry to make you keep moving, can you take some deep breaths in and out? And out. Good work. And again. And out. Very good work. Okay. Now I just want to have a feel of your tummy, so let's see if we can work this bed out. If not, can you just shuffle down to the bottom? Well done. Shuffle down to the bottom. Well done. And rest. No, no, stay on the bed if possible. Down, and lay down, sweetie. Lay down. Lay down as if lay you're down. going to sleep. Well done. Well done. I'm just going to have a feel of your tummy. <gasps> Are you snoring? Do you snore when you sleep? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes? Oh. Mummy, does he really snore? He does. 
Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Keeps everyone awake, eh? No. All right, well done. And I'm just going to have a little look at your ankles, okay? Do you like angry birds? Nice angry bird socks, eh? All right, thank you very much, Joel. Thank you. Do you want me to help sit you up? Uh, or are you comfortable like that? Comfortable. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And Joel, sorry, uh, how old did you say you were? Uh, seven. Seven. Oh, seven, and seven and a half. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, thank you for asking me to examine Joel, who's a lovely seven year old boy. Um, to complete my examination, I'd like to know what his blood pressure is, and I would also like to feel his femoral pulses and do a uh, full systemic examination. Uh, Joel appeared um, to be well today. He was not in any respiratory distress. He did not have any dyspnea or signs of um, any um, cyanosis on examination. He, um, he appeared to be slightly short for his age, and I'd like to uh, plot him on an appropriate growth chart. Um, on undertaking the cardiovascular examination today, I noticed that he did have a degree of clubbing in his fingers, which may indicate previous, cyanotic, um, uh, pr previous cyanosis. On examination of his face and mouth, I noticed that he had um, some abnormally shaped teeth, which were uh, peg-shaped. Um, his JVP was normal, and on examination of his chest, I noticed that he had a midline stenotomy incision, as well as two thoracotomy incisions on the right and left on his back. Um, on auscultation of the chest, however, his heart sounds one and two were present and he did not have any murmurs. He did not have any hepatomegaly or any ankle edema. So in summary, this is a seven-year-old child who is likely to have had um, complex congenital cardiac disease, which would have been cyanotic, as he has clubbing, and this has been surgically corrected. I also wonder whether he has an um, associated syndromic diagnosis due to the appearance of his uh, teeth. Okay, so you mentioned that he has some scars. What do you think could have caused those scars? Okay, so uh, for the midline stenotomy incision, that could be any cardiac surgery uh, which requires open heart surgery. For his uh, thoracotomy incisions, the right and left, um, right thoracotomy incisions can be due to. Um, tracheoesophageal fistula repairs, BT shunts, or lobectomies. And the left side, it can be due to those three as well, as well as uh, PDA repairs and PA banding and coarctation of the aorta repairs as well. So um, although I can't tell for sure, I can say that he's had com a congenital heart disease and he's likely to have had complex surgery to correct this. And he has no residual murmurs. And you commented on his Um, one cardiac condition that I know has widely spaced teeth is uh, Williams syndrome. Um, also, peg-shaped teeth, and also I think he may have um, sparse hair. Um, <laughs> maybe um, ectodermal dysplasia, and I'd want to examine him to see um, if he had any other features of this. So with ectodermal dysplasia, you get um, abnormalities of the teeth and of the hair and of the skin. So they may have dry skin. They may have um, reduced sweating, and so they would be at risk of hypothermia. And that's one thing that I could um, examine for us the mother for. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Okay, Mum. So is it all right if we ask Joel a couple of questions? Yes. So, Joel, so I'm Mary, and... I wanted to ask you a little bit about how um, having your the condition that you have and how that affects your life. Does it does it affect you in any way day to day? No. no. Good. So it doesn't really cause you any any difficulty. And would you agree with that, Mum? What What would you say, Mum? I would say that he easily gets tired when he runs and he can't walk a long distance because he's a bit, a bit tired. So this is the only way uh, which I can see that affects him. His heart condition affects him. And his uh, genetic condition is very much displaced. him in a way he gets very hot very easily. So I need to, uh, to control his uh, uh, heart 
how he feels because when it's hot summer or you wait for a day to paint, for example, uh, I need to be sure that he's got plenty of water and he's got something to cool his, him down. I see. Usually it's a little spray. The spray over his uh, his face helps a lot. So uh, it doesn't affect, affect him in a bad way, but of course I need to take uh, a Okay. And would you mind telling us how you worked out that he did have an underlying heart condition and ectodermal dysplasia? So how did how did you come to notice that there were some unusual features of him and how did that come to be diagnosed? You mean ectodermal dysplasia? Um, yes, yeah. Yes. Um, we didn't notice because it's not a thing you, you can easily notice. Uh, when he was uh, nearly one year old, he didn't have his teeth yet, his first teeth. But then they appeared, that bottom one, two of them, and they were uh, weird shaped. Okay. Like that, uh, pointed, yeah. like head shape. So I was I... wondering if it's okay. We went to his uh, pediatric doctor uh, at our local hospital. Well, 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 and when my uh, well, 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 teeth is a problem, it, it, it went by. Yeah, they, they, um, yeah. Oh, yes, they, they were late. I thought that you you would have squared him, but it didn't but, happen. But, uh, but then they were a bit... Uh, had yes. pointy, and pointy teeth, teeth yes. I see. But uh, then we were referred to uh, St. Thomas's, to Dr. Mike. She, 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 she noticed that our first one was sharp teeth. Yes, I the see. first one in our family. The first one in the family, I see. Kind of teeth. So the doctor took a look at him, at his hair, at his... Uh, eyebrows and uh, at his nails and uh, just watching him, absorbing him. He told me that it's likely to be ectodermal dysplasia. And then uh, he had a blood test. And after that, we were sure he, he's got this condition, but in kind of a mild way. Okay. So he can sweat, not as good as uh, me and you. But, uh, I can't sweat. I never sweat. You are sweating less than me, okay? That's it. So, um, that's it. Then we had uh, a few appointment, appointments with the dermatologist. Because yes. He's got dry skin and he's got eczema as well. Okay. Not at the moment, as you see, but sometimes he's got his red uh, dry spots. Uh, okay. But then, as the uh, doctor explained, that you can't do anything with it. Can't be treated. Okay. So we just like uh, supporting their uh, creams and emollients. Uh, that's it. Uh, okay. That's how it's. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, oh, Mum. And could you tell us about what operations he's had? So tell us what they were for, and um, so why he had the operations in the first place, and then what they were trying to do with the operations. We've got a big one here. Can you see? Now they can talk, okay? So, um, he wasn't diagnosed uh, yeah. when I was pregnant. So, it's happened for us. It was a bit like a So, when he was a baby, three weeks old, I noticed that there is a constraint in bleeding. Okay. And that he my second child, I, I could uh, notice that there is some really strange things happening. So, we arrived to the hospital. And they couldn't uh, work out what, what was it yes. because he was already three weeks old. Okay. And uh, um, then they referred us to Evelina Children's Hospital. Yeah. And he was diagnosed with a hypoplastic left heart and some more diagnosis. So it's quite complex. And uh, could you tell us what all the diagnoses are? I don't remember. Okay, don't worry. But yeah, hypoplastic left heart. Yes, yeah. from the yeah. Yeah. So, uh, He oh, nearly yeah. died, but right, it was collapsed, but the doctor would say, oh, my darling. Mm. And uh, they put BT shunt yeah. first, and uh, then the BT shunt started to leak, which was a very rare complication. Okay. And they did some more procedures to... I don't like uh, mine. I don't like And we ended uh, up with a preparatory window. Right. And then when he was uh, nearly 10 months old, uh, it was a 
Okay. Okay. Children, please. Give me ten bucks. And then when he was three, oh. years old, he uh, they completed the whole treatment. Yeah. The stage was the full contact. Okay. So since then, he he looks better mm -hmm. because he was really supposed uh, with the uh, nails and the blue lips, and uh, his situation was like about 70. Now he's like 95. Yeah. 95, which is. I'm not 95. I mean, the situation is true. It's a uh, level of oxygen in the blood. Oh. So. We need 95%. 95%, right? Yes, that's right. That's, is that more than everybody's blood? No, it's less than everybody because we have hundreds. But, but it's much, much, much better than it was before. Yes, comparing what you had when you were little. Even, I'm not little. So, when you were little, not beetle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never beetle. <laughs> so, that's, that's how it happens. But, uh, in between, between the patients, uh, we had some more procedures because uh, he was very poorly, his uh, oxygen, uh, not oxygen, his uh, hemoglobin dropped down to a critical level. So we, uh, they transferred us to the And uh, uh, then he needed the procedure to, uh, to close up his collateral blood vessels, which yeah. is what it developed to. Hey, uh, you didn't talk about my scar. His left heart. We, we did, we had a little chat about your scar, Joe, we did. Yes, so he had one they operation cut, They cut his my back. body. Yeah. And because uh, it was an emergency, they didn't have an MRI scan yeah. done. So uh, they tried from the usual way, and it didn't work because of all the blood vessels tucked inside of his body. That's they why cut they cut my body, they cut my body. body. I see. And then, and then he had a heart operation. He was barely 10 months old, and when he was 2 years old, he had a heart operation. Was I very much, Mum? Okay. Was I very much, Mum? Yes, I'm very much, Mum. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mum. That's really helpful. And thank you very much, Joe.